Hey, everybody, this is Furch. Um, I want to talk about something a little bit more esoteric for you. And that is, you know, what is your dream in comics? Now, when I say dream, you know, that there's a couple different personas here, a couple different roles. Maybe you're working in comics and your dream is actually to have a best selling comic. And your dream is to, you know, one day kind of manage your own thing. You don't have to talk to an editor of Marvel. You don't have to kind of get anything approved by anybody. You just want to, write your own ticket, do your own thing, and you want to be successful. And you want to kind of, you know, be in charge of your own destiny. Or maybe for a fan, what you want to do is is have those memories, like you have for, I don't know, whatever it happens to be. You want to be able to, you know, have the the the, the comic run that you pick up that you love and enjoy. It's okay to kind of veer into your dreams. One thing I notice about, you know, 2024 and, and kind of how people act and behave is people are very edgy about just you know living their dream like their dream is some kind of embarrassing cuck thing that if you admit that you have a dream you're somehow weaker somehow more pathetic um i i hear that a lot you know it's like oh i i really love whatever it happens to be this thing this idea this uh this comic i i, I there's this weird um there's a video i was listening to somebody sent it to me and in it uh, the people in the video were talking about how pathetic it was to actually want to enjoy something from the big two. They were talking about how it was, uh, it was, you know, asinine to actually want to enjoy mainstream comics. And I, I just found that so profoundly sad. Why would you want to not enjoy something that exists? Like, why, why, why? That 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 doesn't none of that make none of that matter none, none of that made any sense to me. You should want to love comics. Like, why are you collecting and reading comics if you don't want to love them? Is it embarrassing to say you love something? I mean, fuck, how pathetic is that? I mean, that's that's that just that's sad. You should every time you're a consumer and you go into the store and you pick up a comic, you should hope that that comic you're about to read. Is the best goddamn comic you've ever read in your life. You should hope that your best days are before you. That the comic you read is going to be incredible. That the story you're about to be told is amazing. That this is going to unearth or unseat whatever you know magical kind of comic run you loved and be your most favorite comic of all time. That should be how you feel. That should be what comics creates for you. If, if that's not what you're hoping for, what, what are you even doing? What's the point? I, I don't, I don't want to, like, imagine, I'm just trying to imagine the mentality of, of reading comics and, and not wanting to love what you're reading. That's, that's crazy to me. And yet, if you listen to a lot of the commentary, they want to shame you. You know, they want to say, you don't get to love those things. You don't get to enjoy something. If you credit, if you compliment Something that a mainstream comic could do it has done. You're a shill, you know. I, I I've seen uh, there somebody recently. Have, uh, there's a a post. I'm not going to dignify the guy's name, but he's like, you know, Perch is part of the Whisper Network. He's an industry shill. I'm sorry if you listen to my videos for any length of time. If you think I'm part of some kind of industry shill Whisper Network, you're you're out of your mind. This would have to be the most amazing case of reverse psychology. In the history of all of comics, if you listen to the show, guy driving around, not editing anything, just, you know, bullshitting his way through 10 minutes, and you're thinking, this guy is clearly a paid shill who is a trying to, to kind of, you know, manage the comic book industry. You're nuts. Clearly nuts. I understand that the whole gimmick and grift of a lot of how this stuff works is that we're supposed to, you know, basically anything that we don't like is the worst possible thing of all time. It's the same kind of, this is going to be a horrible analogy for a lot of you, but um, I, I'll do it anyway. Uh, we're in election season right now, and you have people who are talking about how January 6th is the, and I'm, I'm sure I'm getting demonetized the, the hell out of everything I'm saying right now, but basically January 6th, I'm not trying to make money off the channel anyway, so be my guest. Um, January 6th was a threat to democracy. We almost lost America in that moment. I'm sorry. The reason why that doesn't work is when you look at the footage, 
and you see these dumbasses in cosplay just wandering around the Capitol, um, it's hard to look at that and go, yeah, these people are about to overthrow the, the country and install a new government. There, there's no way. If, the, uh, if, if that was truly a threat, the military could come in there and wipe those in about 15 seconds. And so that's a little bit of what comics are like right now, where we, it's, it, I mean, you could call it gaslighting, but that, that in effect is what's going on. It's saying that, hey, look, um, a fact that a couple people are doing, or 20 people or 100 people, whatever it happens to be, are doing crowdfunding, this is a threat to all of comics as we know it. You're, you're out of your mind. Nobody actually thinks that. Nobody believes it. And it, it doesn't make any common sense. And so for, for comics, you know, comics are entertainment. I believe comics should be taken seriously because we love them, right? You're listening to this channel right now. You've, you've probably got, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of comics, right? You know, in, in your house right now. I don't know what you've got. But comics are something that matters to you, to me, to a lot of us. And if it matters, then we care about it. If we care about it, then that's all that really ma- that, that, that There's no more that needs to be said in that story. We all love comics. And if you love comics, you want comics to be good. And so, on one hand, you don't want to be gaslit that, hey, comics are selling better than others. These are the best comics you've ever seen in your life. No, they're clearly not. Nobody believes that. Everybody knows that's not true. Everybody can see these comics and see that, you know, in a lot of cases, we're, we're half-assing this entire thing. And it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't stack up. On the other hand, getting told that comics are shit, the entire industry is dying, if you love any comics, you're a shill, that doesn't ring true either. So for, for several years in the course of this channel, I started this in 2019. It's 2024 right now. We're going to celebrate the five-year anniversary in May. And, you know, looks like May passed 50,000 subscribers, which is a crazy amount that never thought we'd get to and never really cared to get to. But what that tells me is for those of you who signed on over the years, and I don't have high video views, and I know that, and that's fine. You want to love comics. And what you want to do is you're fine to complain about comics. There's plenty of problems in comics. There's plenty of issues, plenty of things we, we are frustrated about in comics. But there's also a lot of really wonderful things in comics. And to deny that is to deny yourself, to deny your love. You know, I, I think that anyone, and I've, I've asked this to people, hey, right now, if you could slap your, uh, snap your fingers and suddenly Marvel are producing some of the best comics you've ever read and you're buying all those comics and you're really enjoying it, would that make you happy? And I've talked to people who are like, no. No, that company has gone too far. The people have pissed me off too much. I want them to die and go under. Whenever somebody says that, I know that they're not a true comic fan. Because the reality is, we do want love. We do want success. We want these comics to be great. We do. You can deny it all you want. We can say that, uh, you know, we're, it's okay to be pissed off at something. And granted, a lot of the behavior, a lot of the stability is stupidity. And, and Marvel is the largest comic company. And people at Marvel always hate it when I say this, but it's, it's the truth. Marvel, for 30 to 40 years, this is not a new development. This is despite what you've heard on YouTube. This did not start in 2017. Marvel, historically, have been arrogant. If you talk to any retailer, anybody who's gone to a con... Since the early 90s, they will tell you Marvel acts like a bunch of pricks. They have. It's just who they are. Now, it doesn't mean there's not good people at Marvel. There have been. There's some, some delightful people who work at Marvel. Some of my closest friends worked for Marvel, and a couple of them still work for Marvel. And, you know, there's, there's nice people there. But as a whole, the company culture, especially when they show up at conventions and other things, are dicks. That's how they are. I still don't want them to fail. Why? Because I love Wolverine and the X-Men and the Avengers and the, the days when Mobius used to do uh, Silver Surfer and the days when John Byrne used to do Fantastic Four and when Jim Shooter did Secret Wars and all the rest. 
What I want is for me, I want to be able to go into a comic shop and enjoy comics. Whether it's Marvel, DC, or Indies, and ideally, it's all three. The world is best when all three of those things are working together. And so, this is my pushback, is a lot of channels, a lot of things are doing this this bit. And sometimes you see it in the comics, uh, sorry, the comics, the comments in videos like mine and on Twitter and on YouTube, where people will say, no, you know, they, they, they got, they went too far. They pushed me too far. And now I want them to die. Now I want them to suffer and feel pain. Well, what's interesting about the culture war and kind of this movement is a lot of people in it are Christian or at least religious. And if I'm telling you something that is definitely not a Christian religious belief is that you want your enemies to suffer and feel pain. It's definitely not a Christian belief. So I'm saying this as somebody who is not religious. I've said this on the channel before as well. I'm not. I'm very, I am who I am. All the same, I don't want my enemies to suffer. I want them to learn. I don't want the people who've done me wrong to hurt. I want them to get better. Particularly, though, for the comics and the properties and the media that I love, the characters, the stories, and the memories, especially the memories that have meant so much to me over the years. None of us live forever. You know, I'm, I'm in there bagging comics. I'm putting things in boxes, and I'm kind of organizing a bunch of stuff that came in in inventory. And as I'm picking up these comics, I'm looking at all kinds of things. I'm looking at the Weapon X series from way, way back. I'm looking at comics from the late 90s. I'm looking at the first time that Buziak and Perez did the Avengers. I'm looking at the Legion of Superheroes from the five years later you know, have run. I'm looking at all these amazing comics. I'm looking at the early 70s. I'm looking at comics in the 60s. I'm looking at the first 20 issues of Amazing Spider-Man with all this amazing kind of crazy stuff that Ditko is doing. And I think to myself... I love this. I, I realize I said a bunch of Marvel stuff, tons of DC stuff in there too. But I love this. And I think if if you're in this and you're sung with this channel for this long, because look, the, the, the people who disagree, they've they've all migrated onto other places that say purchase a giant cuck for loving comics. Well, I'm sorry. If you love comics, that makes you heroic. It doesn't make you a cuck. It doesn't matter if the company's misbehaving. It doesn't matter if the people are behaving badly. It doesn't matter if one individual is being a prick. I want these comics to be amazing. I want to have more memories. I am greedy. This isn't enough. I have read personally easily 25,000 comics. Easily. I, at one point I had calculated it up. I mean, it's tons of comics. I've read every single X-Men, every Avengers, every Green Lantern, every Flash, every Justice League, every Spider-Man. I've run, uh, and all the miniseries that go on between. I was there when Gossamer appeared in uh, New Mutants and Brett Blevins used to draw with the perkiest tits you could ever imagine. I was there when Kitty Pride was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I was there, uh, uh, all these different memories, all these different comics. For me, I just want great comics. And I think you do too, most of you. The people who just want everything to, to blow up, those people are tourists. Those people are people who are hoping that they can grift a couple extra dollars out of this industry from suckers who don't know any better. But for you and me, I want great comics again. I want another great Wolverine epic. The last great Wolverine epic I remember reading was when Mark Millar did that enemy of the state business and Wolverine was a brainwashed hand agent killing people. And that was pretty good shit. I don't remember reading a good Wolverine story past then. Not a great one. I'm sure I'm pissing somebody off. I, Old Man Logan. I love that. I, I guess that came later. But look, I want more great comics. I think we all do. And that is the secret to comics. That is the secret to fandom. That's the secret to all of us. Let's go enjoy things. You know what? The, the crazy part about it is there's more likelihood that we will enact change from enjoying things and demanding more enjoyment than demanding everything to blow up and burn down and fire. Think about it. Thanks for listening.